so hi dear students we have again come with a new video of class 12 and where we just want to learn about the cells its emf terminal voltage and internal resistance see uh, as we have started in current electricity there we have learned to flow current through a circuit we need a constant potential difference and generally the potential difference is supplied by the cells we all know the cell is an instrument where the chemical energy converts into electrical energy and in that cell we have measured some physical quantities like emf terminal voltage and internal resistance so step by step we have come if you are an ICSC student in class 10, then you have learned this thing. But here we have to learn it again. Okay, let's see. So first come for EMF, whose full form is electromotive force. So though at the end of the name it is force, but practically it is not a force. What is it that will come one by one? So before discussing about EMF, I'm just making you remember that what we have learned in class 9 and class 11, that is potential energy and kinetic energy. We have learned it and it is very common thing for us. And I know that you have learned it, I think from class 7 or 8. So what we have told, what is potential energy? We all know due to the rest of a body due to the shape and size of a body what ability of doing work is possessed by a body that is known as potential energy just like that if i have taken a stone to a height then it will get a potential it will just achieve a potential energy if the mass is in it is mgh okay and when we use the energy we put into use just means we have to fill it down the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. Similarly, if you uh, just take a hammer, okay, if you take a hammer and hold it in your hand and just lift it at a height, then here potential energy is stored. And whenever you have to use it, that means hit it on the nail, then this potential energy is converts into kinetic energy. Similar things, whenever we have to compress the spring, okay, by application of force, here potential energy is possessed and the value also we know that is half kx square and when we release it, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. Now you might be asking, sir, why you have written this story? about potential energy and kinetic energy. See, initially we all uh, assume for our calculation that total potential energy converts into kinetic energy when we use the potential energy. But we all know that in generally, practically, it is not possible. When we use potential energy, then some of the energy is lost due to some reason. Here, the resistive force of air that will just lose some energy so we don't get exactly equal potential energy converts into kinetic energy here also some problems will happen in this case there is a great force that is called frictional force that will act between them which also reduce the kinetic energy what is the main theme of my whole story that when we use potential energy to convert it to kinetic energy some of the energy is lost i think my idea is clear to you from this story we'll start the idea of electromotive force electromotive force is nothing but the energy stored in a cell that is as a form of electrical energy just like potential energy how let's see when we are talking about cell there is a container okay in this container there is a solution that is known as electrolyte and in generally we use 
here dilute H2SO4 okay as electrolytic solution we have just put two electrodes here one we have taken copper and another one is zinc okay which one is cathode which one is anode that we will come little later as it is diluted H2SO4 so it will stays inside in an ionic form that means H2SO4 that is splits into 2H plus plus SO4 double minus okay now these two ions this is positive ion and this is negative ion we all know in which electrode the positive ion goes there we will get the anode and in which direction the negative uh, negative ion goes there we'll get anode there is also a reason behind it why this positive ions this H plus ion generally it goes to copper okay there is also reason behind it the reason is that if you read electrolysis in chemistry you will get an activity series in that activity series at the middle there is hydrogen and in up of the hydrogen above hydrogen some elements are there some metals are there and below hydrogen also some metals are there so which are above the hydrogen or which are higher in activity series generally they will get the positive electrode okay and those who are lower they will act as a negative electrode that is cathode whatever when the positive ion goes what will happen you know this positive ion means there is a deficiency of electrons so this positive ion just get electrons okay from this copper so as you release or give electron to H plus so it will convert into hydrogen and it will go in a form of bubbles outside the hydrogen gas goes out but as you give electron you convert into positive because there is a deficiency of electrons and that's why the copper will get a positive charge and that's why it is acting as a anode in case of zinc this sulfate here two minus are there so this sulfate goes to zinc and it release two electrons here okay so as more and more electrons are stored on the zinc so definitely the zinc will get a negative polarity and it is acting as a cathode okay so by this way copper and zinc both of them will get two different charges so here you see for case of copper as the positive charges are stored so copper will get positive potential and zinc it will get negative potential so there is a potential difference created between two charges but is there any charge can able to flow through it no why because there is no connection is made between this anode and cathode so that's why the potential difference are created between them but the charges cannot able to move from anode to cathode that means the positive charges or in another sense the electrons cannot come from cathode to anode as there is no connection so as there is a constant potential difference is created that means we can say that to take a positive charge from anode to cathode and then again anode what work you have to do that work per unit charge is known as emf now you might be thinking sir what you are telling i'm telling the thing we have just told earlier that potential energy in the previous part i have told that it is stored 
but we cannot able to use it here also the potential difference are created but we cannot able to use it just compare with the potential energy before use what energy is stored now how we can able to find the energy so for that reason we are assuming one thing that if i want to take a positive charge q from anode to cathode and then again anode that means if i take a positive charge here q we go to cathode and again we return to anode so that total energy stored or total energy is needed okay that energy that energy per unit charge it is known as the yemi which is denoted by epsilon so epsilon is written as w by q why because that q that is the charge you have taking to take a complete cycle how much work done energy just now i have told energy so energy means how much work you have to do that much work per unit charge is known as emf so if i want to define emf we can say for thing that in a open circuit to take a complete rotation of a charge through this electrolysis process what work done per unit charge we have to do that is known as emf and its unit if you see its unit should be volt okay so no connection the energy stored is this energy per unit charge is known as emf which is denoted by this epsilon okay now we will go for terminal voltage now we have to come to the next part that is terminal voltage what is it simple thing what we have seen in case of emf there we have seen two electrodes they will get two different polarities and they will have a potential difference between them okay now we just want to use this energy this potential difference then what we have to do we have connected assume by a bulb okay so here bulb signifies a resistance is given between them so you know here we have taken copper and here we have taken zinc so here it is positive so it is anode it is negative now very simple thing the positive charges wants to move to the negative charges so that means a flow will occur as well as this negative electrons they just try to move in positive direction so there will be a flow of charges so as there is a flow of charges we all know we will get a current and for that the bulb will start glow okay so as the charges starts moving this bulb starts glowing and now the problem is that whenever we are storing we are talking about the emf the energy stored between the two electrodes they are not moving okay so they we, then we cannot able to use that thing but as we have connected then we can able to use the energy so just assume that what we have told earlier that potential energy when it is used it converts into kinetic energy as the charges starts moving okay and as they are moving simply there should be 
a potential difference is created between them that is known as terminal voltage. If I have taken a charge Q is passing from positive electrode to negative electrode that means anode to cathode okay so it will do some work so this work done per unit charge is known as Q if the work does is W dash so that W dash by Q that is known as terminal voltage when it is used simple thing when it is not used then work done per unit charge it is known as EMF and when it put to use then the work done per unit charge from positive to negative electrode that is known as terminal voltage but there is a problem what is the problem the problem is that just see here as we have told that all positive charges are just try to move on the negative electrode and the negative charges have come to the positive electrode that's why the flow of charges will occur but as once they reach the negative charges and negative will reach the positive electrode and positive charges will reach to the negative electrode then this terminal voltage this potential difference between them that will over because why there is negative charges because there is excess amount of electrons why there is positive charges because there is a vacancy of electron so once the electrons come to the electrode then the vacancy of electrons will be over and once they have come here so there will be no excess electron so initially the potential difference we have seen between anode and cathode whenever we have to use it then after using the potential difference will over and as the potential difference will over then the flow of charges it will be less and it will be stopped so we will see the bulb will glow once and then it will stop because once it will glow because the charges are coming but as they have reached to opposite uh, electrodes then the potential difference will over then there will be no current passing through it it will stop but what we have seen practically practically we have seen when a cell it is put into use continuously it will glow then what will happen okay so then we have come to another thing that is known as voltage drop just listen in and try to understand i'm taking a line from the great hc burma's book concept of physics and that is mentioned by hc burma battery mechanism hc burma has mentioned that in battery mechanism that positive charges those will reach in the cathode they will just pass through the electrolytes and again they will reach to the positive terminal to maintain the potential difference one word i have used that is battery mechanism what just he wants to tell here he just wants to tell that whenever the charge will come here on the another electrode it will not stop that means a positive charge or in another way when the electrons come here to the anode it will not stop rather it will go by the electrolytes and reach to the cathode and there is a controversy arise what controversy you have just told sir here it is positive where it is negative positive will go to negative it is obvious but whenever you have to told that positive charge again return to the positive electrode how it is possible why because we know the positive charges or the positive electrode will repel this positive charge so it will never have to reach here but you have told it will come similarly the electrons will reach in this electrode they have to go by this way and just go to the negative electrode that is cathode 
but these negative charges will repel the electron. They will not allow the electron to reach. We are telling this on the basis of electrostatic force. By that we know that positive charge is repelled by positive charges and negative charges will repel by negative charges. But here one thing we have forgot that here one energy is there that is chemical energy. So due to the chemical energy it is what is mentioned by Sir S. C. Burma that is battery mechanism this chemical energy is much much greater than the electrostatic energy we have assumed. So due to that chemical energy that positive charges are forced to reach to the another electrode. So as the positive charges will reach here then what will happen? There is a very interesting thing you see as the positive charges will reach you see from here the electrons are reaching to the positive electrode and here the positive charges will again reach to the electrode. So this positive charge will neutralize this electron. Listen it again. As we have connect it, the electrons are troubled by the wear, outside wear, outside of the circuit and they just want to reach here at positive electrode. But as the positive electrode, the positive charges will reach here, they will just come through the electrolytic solution and again reach to the positive electrode. So this electrons and positive charges will come across together. So as they come across, they will neutralize each other. In another sense, here the positive charges will reach here. Okay, as it will reach here, the electrons from this they will just want to reach here. So this electron and this positive charge will just coalesce together or come across together and the potential difference should always be maintained. In one word I just want to say the battery mechanism that means due to the chemical energy the positive charges will again return to the positive electrode as well as the negative charges or negative ions return to the negative electron by that way the potential difference is maintained this potential difference is maintained continuously and that's why the bulb glows on and now we have seen that whenever we are talking about the difference between the potential of the two electrode we have mentioned the word terminal voltage but what will happen when they will come here so for that also we need a work done so we can say that work is done to take a positive charge from anode not anode from cathode to anode through electrolytic solution okay so work is done to take a positive charge from cathode to anode through electrolytic solution and that work is done by the chemical energy okay and that work done per unit charge is known as voltage drop okay so if you take this positive charge q from anode to cathode if you have done a work small w so we can say voltage drop small v equals to small w by q okay so i'm just clearing out by connecting it all together 
what we have just told now whenever there is no connection the total energy stored that is its emf that energy per unit charge okay but when you just connect this two then to take the positive charge to positive uh, one positive charge from anode to cathode you have to do some work done per unit charge and that work done is w dash and that w dash by q that is known as terminal voltage and when it reaches to the anode then some extra work is needed when it reaches to cathode i'm sorry when it reaches to cathode some extra work is needed to take that charge from cathode to anode through electrolyte so that work done per unit charge it is known as voltage drop now you might be asking sir why it is known as voltage drop the reason is that voltage drop means that voltage or that work per unit charge it cannot be used by the person who is using the cell that cannot be used that is lost in some book it is written as lost volt lost volt means this voltage is not used from anode to cathode that voltage it cannot be used by us because this terminal voltage we can use it by glowing bulb by making some another electrical instrument by using some another electrical instrument but this work is not used simply when the potential energy converts into kinetic energy then potential energy we are using it then maximum energy is convert into kinetic energy but some energy it is lost as a form of frictional energy as a form of opposition uh, as a form to overcome the opposition force of air whatever the reason may be that energy cannot be used and that lost energy is mentioned here that lost energy per unit charge that is lost volt or voltage drop okay so potential energy we can take it as the total energy or total work to take a charge okay in open circuit so we can write total work to take a charge in open circuit should be equal to total work to take a charge in closed circuit plus work to take a charge through electrolyte that means whenever no connection is made what energy is stored that energy is lost to take the charge from anode to cathode that is known as terminal voltage because that work per unit charge is known as terminal voltage and the rest of the energy is lost to take the charge from cathode to anode again so if the total work is mentioned by w so total work to take the charge that is mentioned by w dash and work done to take a charge through electrolyte it is small w or if i divide it by the total charge this should be the emf epsilon w dash that is the terminal voltage plus small v that is the relation between the emf terminal voltage and the voltage drop emf is the total work done per unit charge okay terminal voltage the total work done per unit charge in a closed circuit and here the work done per unit charge to take the charge from anode to cathode to anode through electrolytes okay so that is the whole story of emf terminal voltage okay now we have to come by 
one interesting thing that is internal resistance and how it comes so as we have told internal resistance so it is come very much internally okay so let's see it okay do the diagram again and just we want to see what is internal resistance so we are discussing about internal resistance i have drawn the diagram again and in this case i have not given any bulb instead of it i have used a resistance r okay so if i connect it through a positive and a negative electrode so there must be a current passes through it if the amount of current is i so we can mention that terminal voltage v equals to it can be represented by i into r as per ohm's law simple thing i amount of current is passing through the resistance r and the potential difference it is the terminal voltage it is v so the current passing through it if it is i then terminal voltage v equals to i into r now the question has come when this total current current means the charge is passing through the another electrode okay the charge per second is passing through the another electrode then it will not stop here it will come so as the charge per unit second it is coming here definitely the total current will be i because whatever charges passing per second that whole charge will return so the amount of current will be same but as the current passing through the electrolytic solution you just assume that through electrolytic solu solution it will feel some resistance because in electrolytic solution means what are there the ions so when the another charges will come they will collide with the ions and as they are collided with them so there must be a position force that is the resistance and that resistance inside the cell due to the electrolytic solution it is known as internal resistance just now we have told about battery mechanism so due to battery mechanism the positive charges will return to the anode and when they will return they will feel some opposition force offered by the electrolytic solutions here and that resistance is known as internal resistance generally we denote internal resistance by small r so by the help of ohm's law we can mention here that voltage drop what is denoted by small v that can be represented by i into small r okay here also the amount of current is i so resistance is r so the voltage drop between two electrode that is small v why it is voltage drop because this voltage is not used terminal voltage it is used to glow the bulb or to do some another work but here this voltage is not used that is lost that's why it is voltage drop when we are coming to the relation between them we have just learned that emf epsilon equals to terminal voltage plus potential drop okay so terminal voltage it can be represented by i into capital r voltage drop it can be represented by i into small r and it is emf epsilon if i take a common of i it should be epsilon and i equals to epsilon by r plus small r so we can able to find the total current if i know the resistance is applied to the circuit as well as the internal resistance of the cell not only that if i want to find the internal resistance through the information is given to us that also we can do that e plus small v so it can be written as e minus v is equals to small v and small v means i into smaller and from here r 
equals to E minus V by I. And if you put the value of V, that is epsilon minus I into capital R by I. So it can be written as epsilon by I minus R. That is your smaller, that is the internal resistance. So this is the story of internal resistance. Now the question has come on which thing, on which factors the internal resistance depends. Basically, it is clear that internal resistance, it is a sole property of the cell. So there should be some property or some physical dimension or physical property of the cell on which the internal resistance depends. So we can write factors on which internal resistance depends. So the first factor it has come that is the size of electrodes. In some book, it is written the area of the electrodes. If the area of the electrodes are more, then the internal resistance will be less. Okay, more the area, more the size of the electrodes, then the internal resistance will be less. And less the electrodes, if you take a thin electrode, then the internal resistance will be more. Number two, distance between electrodes. So simple thing, if you increase the distance, so more distance is covered by the charge through the electrolytic solution. If the distance between the electrodes are more, so they have to cover a long distance through the electrolytic solution to reach to the another electrode. So if the distance is more between the electrodes, then the internal resistance will be more. If the distance is less, then the internal resistance will be less. Number three, concentration. of electrolytic solution as the concentration of the electrolytic solution is less the internal resistance will be less if the concentration is more then basically more ions are there more collision more internal resistance you will see that whenever we have taken the electrolytic solution, we prefer dilute H2SO4, not concentrated H2SO4. So if we take concentrated H2SO4, then the terminal voltage will be less. Okay. Coming to the fourth thing, temperature of electrolytic solution. If the temperature of the electrolytic solution is increased, then more amount of ions are created. So you might be asking, sir, more ions means more collision. So more collisions means more internal resistance. No, because here as more ions are created, then the conductivity of the charges will be more. More the charges will flow and the internal resistance will be less. More the temperature of the electrolytic solution less the internal resistance. So these are the properties or the factors on which the internal resistance depends. Okay. And whenever we are talking about some important primary cell, I think you have to use it in your practical. The first will come Lech Lange cell. Lech Lange cell whose EMF is 1.5 volt, okay, and another one is Daniel cell, what is 1.08 volt, okay, this two cell you have to use in your practical, so this two value we have written, that is the two EMF of the cell. Clear? These values are needed later, so I will mention it 
here only okay so we have learned about emf terminal voltage internal resistance of a cell then now we have to use the cell now the question has come how we have to use the cell very simple thing is there that we have to connect it with a conductor by an appliance and the current passes through it we can use the appliance so generally we denote a cell by this sign and you know it's a very kiddie thing to tell you you all know that by that we have to show the positive terminal and by this it is negative terminal so i'm not going much details how we have to represent it or something like that now we have to come a little interesting thing which is totally new for you that is combination of cells so the work of cell is basically to provide potential difference and maybe sometime the potential difference it is needed for an instrument it is more or less but how we have to adjust it by using more than one cells and that is known as battery so here we have to see the combination of cells so when we are talking about the combination the two combinations are there series and parallel so first we have to come for series so when we have to represent a cell now we have to represent it by this way so this resistance which we have taken as r1 and the cell whose emf is e1 or epsilon 1 this r1 is stands for internal resistance okay so we have just now internal resistance just we have understand so one cell is represented by it it is emf and it is its internal resistance and along with we have connect one more cell whose emf is epsilon 2 and whose internal resistance is r2 so if we connect more than one cells then what will be the resultant emf whether it is increase or decrease that is our target so let's first taking some point it is a this point is b and this point is c okay so at a point we are taking the potential is va at b point the potential is vb and at c point the potential is vc we have just learned that epsilon is equals to v plus small v that is terminal voltage plus voltage drop and v equals to epsilon minus v okay and v is terminal voltage and this v is potential drop that is i into smaller okay so terminal voltage can be written as epsilon minus i into smaller so as the cells are connected in series so we have to assume that total current should be constant here that is i and see both the cells just try to flow the charge in same direction because the positive charge will travel from positive to negative so here also it is positive to negative here it is also positive to negative so direction of current is same and we have taken it is i okay because we all know that in series combination the current should always be constant through a circuit so if i retain that va minus vc i'm sorry vb that is this one the potential difference between va minus vb the terminal voltage so it should be epsilon 1 minus i into r1 from this equation that is terminal voltage equals to epsilon minus voltage drop if i return if i write that vb minus vc in this case this difference and here it will be epsilon 2 minus i into r2 right now we have to find out total potential difference so if i want to find total potential difference so total potential difference v equals to va minus vc va minus vc that is the total potential difference we have seen 
Now VA minus VC can be written just VA minus VB plus VB minus VC. If you calculate it, you see VB, VB will be cancelled out and you will get VA minus VC. Now VA minus VB equals to epsilon 1 minus I into R1. VB minus VC, epsilon 2 minus I into R2. So if I write together epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 minus I R1 plus R2. And this is V. Okay. And here, if I compare this equation with the main equation, that is epsilon minus IR. So here, EMF equilibrium, that is the total equilibrium in series, it will be epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2, this one. And R1 plus R2, that will represent the resultant internal resistance R. So that equation can be written as V equals to epsilon equilibrium plus R, I'm sorry, minus I into R. Okay. So it is clear that if you keep the cells in same direction and add in series, then the resultant potential will be increased. Okay, so if here we have to see that if the both EMFs, both cells we have used, these are same. If the two cells having same EMF, same internal resistance, that means if epsilon 1 equals to epsilon 2 and R1 equals to R2, then and this we have to take E epsilon and it is R. So that it can be written as V equals to 2 epsilon because E equilibrium means epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So it should be 2 epsilon, epsilon plus epsilon minus I into 2R. So we just try to make the internal resistance lesser in a cell. So here, if you add the cell one by one and the EMF, if I'm talking about, that should be increased. So that's why if I'm talking about the torch, talking about the remote, there we have to use two cells and they used to connect in series. Okay. And that's why the resultant potential in a cell, whatever we have to use, the potential is 1.5 volt. If you connect it together in series, that will be 2 into 1.5, that is 3 volt. Okay, that's why the resultant potential will be increased. The resultant EMF will be increased. Now, you might be asking that if I change the direction of one cell, if I change the direction, that means to see the diagram, what we have drawn. This is epsilon 1, R1, this is R2, epsilon 2. What will be the resultant uh, EMF in this case? Here you see both the cells are just trying to move the charge in the same direction. But here you see it is just trying to move the charge in this direction and this is in opposite direction. So in the first equation what we have written V equals to epsilon 1, if this direction we have taken positive, then epsilon 2, that direction will be negative and minus I into R1 plus R2 because resistance cannot be decreased. Resistance will always be increased whenever you have to take it in a circuit, but the EMF will decrease. In our general use, what cells we have to use there, mostly all the cells will have same potential 1.5. So if epsilon 1 equals to epsilon 2 equals to epsilon, then epsilon equilibrium equals to epsilon minus epsilon, that is 0. So you see, if you reverse your cell in torch or in remote card, then you cannot able to use it because then your EMF will be 0. And as your EMF is 0, no current is passing through it. 
okay one thing is coming to your mind sir in the remote you are telling several times but the remote we have seen the batteries are connected like this way so whether it is series or parallel no it's series because if i talking about the connection here there is spring here there is another connection and in oppositely here there is spring and here there is the positive terminal that represent that it is basically one thing we just drawn it like this way okay it is kept and series but in a form of s this one and here it is this one but all these are connected by a formula of s so they are connected in series so if you connect the cells in series your resultant emf will be increased okay coming to the another combination that is parallel combination let's see what will happen in case of parallel combination of cells okay parallel combinations of cell so let's see how it seems to be looking so assume it is a cell epsilon 1 r1 and it is epsilon 2 r2 it is connected here at a point A, it is connected here at a point B. Okay, so here you see the two cells are connected in parallel combination. Okay, but as you see the two cells are parallel, so the resultant potential difference across each point, if I have taken it is uh, C, it is D, and it is E, and it is F, this point, we can say that vc minus vd that is the potential difference here should be equals to ve minus vf that is the potential difference here because they all are connected in parallel they all are connected in parallel so that's why this combination we have to assume and here we have to assume that potential difference that Vc minus Vd and V minus Vm is constant that is V. But you know in parallel combination the potential difference are constant but the currents are not constant. It is I1 and it is I2 and when they will meet together it is I and we have to assume that I equals to I1 plus I2. Now let's see. What is the value of V? We are taking Vc minus Vd. Vc minus Vd equals to V equals to epsilon 1 minus I1 into R1. As for the equation V equals to epsilon minus IR, we are taking only this portion and we have written this. And from here, if I want to find I1, so I1 equals to epsilon 1 minus v by r1 we'll get the value of i1 here let's take the equation one next ve minus vf which is also v because it is connected in parallel so it will also be epsilon 2 minus i2 r2 and here it is i2 equals to epsilon 2 minus v by r2 that is equation number 2 we have got i1 and i2 if i put the value we'll get i so i equals to here let's take the value here for that epsilon 1 minus v by r1 plus epsilon 2 minus v by r2 if i write it in a form that epsilon 1 by r1 plus epsilon 2 by r2 minus if i take common v it will come 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 okay now that is the value of i will get but what is our target we have to find the value of v so let's calculate it okay epsilon 1 r1 so if i calculate it 
R1 into R2, it is epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 and here it is V into R2 plus R1 by R1 into R2. Now what we have to do? Now we have to take this V related function in left hand side and I in right hand side. Nothing else. It's a very easy thing. So if I have written here, so V into R1 plus R2 by R1 into R2 that is equals to epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 into R2. Clear? Minus I which is obvious and now that will be multiplied cross multiplication we have to do. So V will come epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 plus R2 and here minus I R1 into R2 by R1 plus R2. So that is our V. If I compare with the first equation we have done, so here I have to just erase uh, the diagram a little bit. Achha, let be the diagram here. I am erasing this portion. If you want to see it again, pause the video and see it. So from this equation, we can say that the EMF equilibrium that has come, that is epsilon 1 R2 plus epsilon 2 R1 by R1 plus R2. And the internal resistance R equals to R1 into R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay. And in this case, it is the equation which can be written by this way that V equals to E equilibrium minus I into R. So equilibrium is this. Now we have to take a condition that if epsilon 1 equals to epsilon 2 equals to epsilon means if these two cells we have taken this is same and R1 equals to R2 equals to R. If you have taken it now put the value here. So epsilon equilibrium will be how much? Epsilon R plus epsilon R by 2R. So it will be 2 epsilon R by 2R. So it will be epsilon. That means if we make the two cells whose EMFs are same in parallel, then basically we will get same potential. There will be no change of EMF. There will be no change of EMF. The equilibrium, EMF equilibrium will be same whatever the separate EMFs we have taken. And the result of the resistance, if I am taking R equilibrium, so R equilibrium will be R squared by, here it is, 2R. And it will cancel and it will come to R by 2. The resistance will decrease, the internal resistance will decrease, but the EMF will be same. So here we have seen for series combination, if we have connected several EMFs in series, then the EMF will be increased. And here in this case, the EMF will be basically if you see it is decreased. And if you take same EMFs, then the resultant EMF will also be same in the case of parallel. Then you might be asking then what is the use of parallel combination to tell the truth. The use of parallel combination in cells are very less. Mostly it is not used. Maximum case it is used that is series combination. Okay. So these are the story of combination of cells. Now you might be asking that sir if I am changing the polarity of any one cell then what will happen? Nothing. Here instead of plus one minus sign will come. Okay. Rest of the thing will be same because the direction of current will be changed then the sign whatever the addition is occurred that is also changed it will come minus okay but rest of the thing will be as usual okay i think it is clear next thing uh, for today's work i will not 
make you learn more thing because after that I'm just taking some names and it is your responsibility to write or to prepare if you have any doubt then you can ask just like if I have told number one heating effect of current so it's very obvious and you all know that if I write it it is H equals to I square RT in Joule or H equals to I square RT by 4.2 in Kelvin. Okay, and that you have known how it has come. You know that if you forget, then see the book again. Number two, electrical power. P equals to V into I. That also you know how it has come. If you want to do it, see the book again. Number three, electrical energy. That is E equals to V into I into T. And along with the units, etc, etc, what are the things are there? All the things, I think for this portion, you have learned earlier. If you forget, see the book again. If you have any doubt, then definitely I will help you. Along with it, uh, I will just make you remember what I have told earlier also that is combination of resistances. So I don't want to make you learn that how the resistances are combined and what will be the equilibrium resistances that you all know. You have done several numericals on that. Okay, but till if you want to see for series you all know that is R equals to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dot 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 whatever the extreme you can take. Okay. And if it is asked the combination of power if they are connected in series. Power in series. Here the idea will change little bit. Here 1 by P equals to 1 by P1 plus 1 by P2 plus 1 by P3 plus dot dot dot. You know, means you have connected several power instrument in series then the power will be the equilibrium power that will be follow the reciprocal rule just like the case of parallel combination and in parallel for the case of resistance you know 1 by R equals to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 and it will goes on and if it is connected in uh, parallel the power in parallel so that is exactly opposite that is p equals to p1 plus p2 plus p3 so that things you have to remember because derivation you have done earlier and the case of power derivation it is not needed if you want you can see the book and if you are having any doubt then i can help you okay regarding power some important questions are also there uh, i think almost all the questions you have done in class 10 uh, you have already done uh, what will be happened with the current if you have taken an instrument of high power okay so high power instrument if it is taken and the potential if it is constant then current will be increased definitely and for that reason only uh, for high transmission we are telling a high tension line so the long wires are coming from a long distance in the high tension line usually the potential difference is making very high okay why what is the reason behind that because power of an instrument is constant if the potential makes high then current will be less through a conductor and as the current will be less then the heating effect will be less and the lasting of that wear will be long so these are some questions are there what is the utility of high voltage in a transmission line that questions i think it is discussed in the book and if you are having any doubt in any question you can ask me so for today this is enough thank you